gothic. It's an open world RPG from 2001, adored by some and really unknown by a lot. Seriously, I thought this thing was a cult classic, but it turns out I had just heard of it a lot. Who knows why I would remember a game called Gothic. But with my interest in RPGs and like knowing if older games are worth playing without nostalgia, I wanted to know if Gothic was worth playing in 2022 for people who've never tried it before, like me. And after playing it, I can confirm, well, it's a mess, but it's a mess on a canvas hanging in an art gallery. And I'm unsure if I'm just too much of a pleb to understand why. I don't get it. Every aspect of Gothic that I think is worth talking about is full of pros and cons, hopping between the line like a dog in that one point in an obstacle course. So that's gonna have to be how we do this review, breaking it down into pros and cons. So let's start. The shortest version of the story I can give is this. There's a mine with some sick ass ore. The one percenters want more control and money, so they hire mages to cast a spell that goes wrong and unintentionally encapsulates the mine and surrounding area in a magic bubble that won't let things out unless it's important to the plot. You're sent into the magic bubble to deliver a message to an important person. The miners inside the bubble still mine and send ore to the outside world in exchange for food, supplies, and the few women you will see in the game. They are not treated well. You're not allowed to talk to us. Which we're not actually going to dive into anymore, because trying to get into representation and things of that nature in this game would be easily its own 20 minute video. There are three main groups in the bubble, each has their own agenda, and you have to side with one of them in order to progress. The story strikes a wonderful balance in between giving you just enough to have a clear goal in a world that feels like anything can happen. Walk close to some blue crackling light, it kills you. Cool, learned a valuable lesson. Walk up to a goblin, get one shot in. Learn there are goblins, and they are not to be messed with. Simple things from seeing a hill and wondering if I can climb it, to seeing a person in the distance and wonder, should I avoid or talk to them? All had a level of uncertainty and weight that made every choice I made at the opening exciting. Though that excitement does fade as you progress. Modern games usually give pretty clear signposting on whether you should or shouldn't try something, or if doing said thing can harm you. Gothic leaves it ambiguous, doling out both punishment and reward for your curiosity. For the most part, I like this. The con side is when you can get easily killed by something seemingly mundane or penalized severely for talking to the wrong person or trying to pet a wild animal. So if you play it, utilize each save slot and save often. Once you clear the opening area, you make it down the hill and see you can advance in multiple directions with no clear bearing on which way to go. Which brings us to talking about... With no map, this moment of uncertainty was delightful and terrifying. I knew I needed to come to Gothic on its level and not think of it as a modern game. So I embraced the uncertainty. My heart told me to follow the river. So I did and I got murdered by giant mosquitoes. So then I avoided the water and followed a new path into the wilderness and also got one shotted, but this time by some wolves. So as excited as I was to have freedom and that mix of curiosity, enjoyment, and anxiety that comes with truly being lost, it did just turn into following the path of least deaths until I reached the first town. And on the subject of towns, Gothic is either comedically bad or purposefully cheeky about how it names things. The names of the three factions you can join are Old Camp, which is the oldest established group in this isolated place, and is basically the patriarchy, one percenters, and all of their subjects. Then there's New Camp, which was established when some folks said, smash the patriarchy, and made a new camp with their own surprisingly conflicting rules and class structures. And finally, there's Sect Camp which is a cult that talks like they are definitely going to show up on a true crime podcast in the near future. Also, they live in a swamp. While I was streaming my whole playthrough of this game, someone in chat thought they were saying sex camp? That information will not affect your playthrough at all, but it made mine better. Those are dumb names, but in context, they also kind of make sense. 
It's a mine that got magically sealed from the outside world, and the comedically simplistic names reflect the brutal straightforwardness of the isolated place and the groups that established and sit on top of the power structures within it. It's silly, sure, but it's a thoughtful piece of world building that also gives each camp a clear place in the story and offers a rare bit of understanding in this completely strange world you're now a part of. You know what else has names? The characters are great, but I mean that in terms of interactions with the characters and not, like, characters as proper nouns. There's no Rex or Tolly that will stick with me forever. The few characters whose names I can remember in Gothic were all pretty one note. Dude who teaches you hunting, yeah, he talks about hunting and speaks like you'd expect a hunter to speak. A good gulp of beer will do. Dude who's a dick and extorts you for money when you're new in town? Yeah, he's a dick. Stuck up religious zealots are stuck up and basically only talk to you when they can flex their religion. Hi, I'm new here. <sighs> While they're not memorable, characters are a doggone treat to interact with because they sound like this. I want to warn you. If you continue this way, you'll be entering our hunting ground. Show me your goods. How often have I told you bastards not to run through my hut? I'll join you for a while. If you don't mind, I'm sure you'll need a friend. Tell me about the outside world. Okay, okay, I'm on my way. I got the best stuff here. Take three rolls of swamp weed. It's northern dark. Good stuff. How are you? I'm real high, man. The range of accents and dialects are... Well, they're not good in the sense of accuracy or convincing voice acting, but they have a level of charm that made me want to talk to every NPC. Uh, also, their animations are hilarious. Usually awkward, always enjoyable. They can get stuck in benches, spin in circles, run funny, run funnier when they're going down hills. They can also just vanish when you turn around. Which is bad when they're tied to a quest. The charm of these characters really can't be overstated. The one note characters I generally consider a con are often playing such a good note, I just can't help but love them. Unfortunately, all of those charming characters can't get me to stop complaining about. This is, without competition, the most frustrating thing about Gothic to me. And whether you think the game is worth playing or not is going to depend heavily on how you feel about this kind of quest progression. Uh, and you know, we're actually, we're gonna need a whole new sheet for this. Gothic gives you a simple quest to start with. Deliver a message to the High Mage. So you brave the wilderness, die a few times, and find the gate to the castle. But the guard says he doesn't trust you, so you can't go in and talk to the mage. He needs Joe, Diego, and Filgabramp to vouch for you in order to let you in to deliver the message. So, you talk to Diego, who says he will only vouch for you if you arrange a surprise party for his friend, Shimeki. So you brave the wilderness, die a few times trying to find everyone on the guest list, based on what could be charitably described as a vague outline of directions, and you make it to one guest who says he'll go, but only if you get 10 pieces of bug meat so he can make a soup for his 10th anniversary with his partner. So you ask around town to find out where the meat bugs are. Steve knows, but Steve won't tell you unless you tell his ex-boyfriend that he left his CD collection in his truck and if he doesn't pick it up today, he's throwing it out. So you have to go to another camp to find Steve's ex-boyfriend to tell him, but Steve's ex-boyfriend tells you that Steve can go straight to hell because he's a cheating bastard. So you go tell Steve that, and Steve gets mad at you and won't tell you where the meat bugs live. So you check the internet, and it turns out that you broke the quest line because you were supposed to lie to Steve, and now you literally have to start another string of quests to find another way into the castle. Every quest is a daisy chain of ooh, one more thing and flimsily related items that you have to do before you can advance. If someone asks you for a glass of water, you could bet your sweaty ass you're gonna need to get sand from the beaches of Spain in order to melt down into a goblet for them before you get them that water. All right, we're done with this. And while you're dealing with all those quests, you'll need to be ready for... Combat swings between delightfully janky and shouting, who let this pass QA? Combat controls as awkwardly as everything else. Oh, shoot, I have to talk about the controls. They're awful. 
Well, I can say a few nice things, like I actually enjoyed that I could play the whole game one-handed on the keyboard, and no, actually that's about it. They're unintuitive, they're underexplained, and frequently just don't work like they're supposed to. Add bad hit detection, bugs, and the fact that slopes are going to make you load previous saves more than dying to enemies, and you have the unholy trinity of shouting at your monitor. So as I was saying, Based on the controls for everything else, it's obvious that combat is going to be just as awkward. What makes combat fun is when it's fast. You approach an enemy and swing. If you don't take out half its blood bar in one swing, you freaking run, because it will definitely take half of yours. As you sell the meat from the critters you can kill to make money, you can buy new weapons, which do significantly more damage, allowing you to kill more enemies and sell more meat, so you can pay an NPC to teach you how to skin animals and harvest their teeth, which gives you more money for each kill, which lets you buy better weapons, which lets you kill more enemies. And this whole loop is both exciting because you get to see yourself progressing by dunking on enemies that previously destroyed you, but also becomes an annoying time sink after the joy of doing more damage wears off. So it's going in both categories. The pure con of combat is when you get armor and can start tanking some hits. But the new enemies are tough, so they can take a few hits. So you're just holding control to lock onto an enemy, and then pressing left and right to swing your sword over and over and over and over and over. There's a way to combo hits, but for the life of me, I could not get it to work. And searching for combat tips online didn't yield any actually useful results. There's also magic, but magic is really expensive, requires you to invest limited leveling resources into, and you need a set amount of mana, which also costs limited resources, making them only usable pretty close to when I stopped playing. They also have completely terrible in-game descriptions of what they do, so have fun spending half your money on a spell, you just shoot off and guess what the effect was. Or find the manual online for a still not super helpful description. You remember this? Being unclear is a common thing in pretty much every aspect of Gothic, so getting anything done means you will be in a... I put at least 25 hours into Gothic, so I experienced quite a lot of what's supposed to be a 30-ish hour campaign. Plot-wise, it didn't feel like I had gotten even halfway through due to how little I'd actually progressed in the story, but I also had that broken quest line, and that probably added like 6 hours to my playthrough that amounted to nothing. Not that I'm still bitter about that. It is a surprisingly vast game, and that definitely appeals to some folks. Whether you try to learn everything in-game or spend time on the internet researching, you'll sink a decent amount of time into Gothic. So whether that appeals to you or not determines if the time sink is a pro or a con. So, with all of this said... Oh boy. Gothic is 30 pounds of game stuffed into a 10 pound bag. And you will notice where every bit of those missing 20 pounds should be. They took the time to make a big open world, but didn't fill it with engaging content, leading to boring stretches when you have to go through large sections of nothing and through repeated backtracking. Quest lines start off engaging, but the ability to progress in them is obscured by unclear progression checkpoints and backtracking. Gothic is ambitious, but ultimately feels incomplete. The good parts are great, but the bad parts are pretty infuriating. And whether or not it's worth it is going to depend on how much you love the pros and weigh against how much you can't stand the cons. There's a lot of love. Oh no. There's a lot to love in Gothic including a lot of small touches that really shows how much the developers poured into it. But you are really going to need to love what it has to overlook the bugs, glaring flaws, and jank. Gothic is polarizing. Its commitment to what it is makes it all the more endearing to those who love what it provides. For me personally, the cons are too strong. I want to know what happens in the story, and where the orcs and goblins came from, and if the sleeper will awaken, and if Steve will make up with his ex. I just don't want to have to put up with the gameplay to find out. Oh hey there, it's me again. Or still, I guess.
different haircut. Beard's a little bit fuller. Having issues with my webcam, so I'm just doing this on my phone so I can get this out to you all. This is the part of the video where I thank everybody who supports. Oh my gosh, that's bright. This is the part of the video where I say thank you to everybody who's been supporting me on Patreon and who continues to support me. Look at this list of badasses. I don't know where this is going to go on this because I'm having to shoot this kind of on the fly. So if you want to support me, you can do that. And if you want the live streams of when I play these games and other games, you can go to Twitch. Thank you for supporting just watching. That's really helpful too. Please share. And that's a plane. And enjoy. I hope you all are ready for the next behind schedule. Because I'm not. I mean, I'm ready for it in the sense that I played the game, but I'm a little concerned about this one. I know I was worried with things like Fallout and Super Metroid. This one has a lot of. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Yeah.